All right, I am sure people are tired of hearing from me because we had a lot going on this week with this WYFF special and everything associated with that. But I wanted to talk um, about some alternative ideas. Surprise, surprise there. Just really kind of have a open discussion around how to approach this epidemic, this overdose epidemic and things like that. And also some ideas, not original ideas, things that I've heard people say that I'm not sure I 100% agree with, but I think it's an interesting way to think of this stuff. So if you think about um, the term narco-terrorism, so some people are talking about this, this uh, epidemic could be a coordinated effort or at least um, a supported effort by enemies abroad because the objective or the outcome would be basically destroying America from the inside out. And if you look at what's going on, let's just let's just talk about like war or traditional war. The last, not the last war that America was in, but the last major kind of like defined battle, the Vietnam War. 70,000 people died during the course of the entire Vietnam War. 70,000 Americans, American soldiers. Now, do you understand that in 2016, 70,000 people died of this overdose epidemic? And and again, I'm not I'm not personally saying that there's an, you know, an equal there, an equilibrium there or that that's that equals narco-terrorism. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying it's an interesting concept. And if you're a foreign enemy and you want to take America out, what better way uh, to do it other than destroy an entire generation, destabilize our economy, look at what's going on in the North. Look at what's going on in Ohio, West Virginia. They can't find a workforce that's actually productive. What is it? 50% of people who dropped out of the workforce nationally, uh, it was related to an opioid issue. They were on opioid prescription drugs. So it's like American American pharmaceutical companies open the door for this and they usher in this process but then fentanyl, carfentanyl, the ongoing production of heroin overseas and things like that. It, it, it jumps on the bus and says, yeah, let's ride this thing. Let's see what we can get done. It's an interesting concept. But here's what's even more interesting. If it's narco-terrorism, then let's declare war Let's declare war on addiction rather than war on drugs. Let's take the money that's being used to lock people up to get an army in the street. And if we are under attack, let's approach it the same way. If we're under attack, if, if, if the United States was invaded and 70,000 people were dying per year, we would not be having committee meetings. We would not be uh, rolling things through the existing stru uh, structure. We would mobilize a militia. And we would take up arms and we would fight the enemy. And I don't care if there are people out there listening to oh, dramatic rich, it's a, it's a battle, we gotta fight the enemy. How silly, Richard. Richard, you're so silly, let's have another committee meeting. We need another committee meeting to discuss where to go with this. No, I'm saying let's. we need a militia in the street. And here's what I'm also saying. Here, I got it. I don't have personally the militia, but in America we have the militia. We have an army of trained recovery coaches that could be mobilized via authentic recovery community organizations to direct this process. It would take a radical shift in policy, a radical shift in approach away from the 28-day rehab, rinse and repeat, intensive outpatient, do the same thing over and over again, expect different results approach. Not because those are bad people doing those things, but because that that mentality or that approach has led to 70,000 people dead or has contributed to the fact that we haven't been able to effectively win this battle. We need guerrilla warfare. You know what it's like? It's like back in the day. You know how they used to fight battles back in the day? The Revolutionary War, you put like the the, the English on one side and the rebellion on the other side and you march across and you hold your muskets up and you shoot at each other. You know, and then a bunch of people fall down and then you walk across and you shoot at each other and a bunch of people fall down and somebody said, you know what? Let's do some guerrilla warfare. Let's hide in the woods and attack these folks when they come rolling by. And all of a sudden, you know, boom, things start to change because they change their tactics. So we're still fighting this thing by like 
walking across the field and getting blasted out of the water. Let's get some guerrilla warfare, urban warfare, door to door, recovery army. I'm in. I'm in. I'm willing to go all in. I'm willing to approach this thing like it's a war, a war on addiction. All right. And you know what? Where would the money come from? Oh, you could just make minuscule shifts in the existing infrastructure. You could minuscule, minuscule shifts in how we pay for criminal justice, locking everybody up. Minuscule shifts in how we like roll the money out currently through the federal government and, and to the states and stuff like that. It wouldn't even take much. It wouldn't even take much. Let's just try it. Let's do this. Word.